After my video on my new Silent Heart PvE build where I soloed Hell Mode, I probably got about a hundred comments asking to drop a build, because we hit the like goal in under a day, which is pretty crazy. So here's the not so long, but very much awaited build showcase. If you haven't seen what this build is capable of, well here's some clips of it on screen. It's posture breaking enemies super fast, has stupidly high defense, and most importantly has has massive M1 damage. I highly recommend the, watching the video where I used it in Hell Mode. However, there is something I didn't tell you about the build, and it's that it's not just one build, but it's actually three different builds that all serve different purposes. The brick wall version I used against Hell Mode, a variant without brick wall but a lot more M1 damage, and a variant that has all live. So it becomes a super tanky high damage support build, which is basically a jack of all trades. How this video is going to work is I'm going to go over the first version stats and talents, and then for the other two versions I'm simply just going to say the stat order and what changes. This will just stop the video from being 30 minutes long. Anyways, as always, if you want to get the actual build maker links, or get updated if I improve this PvE build, then make sure to join my Discord, as well as like and subscribe, since I'll be posting a ton more insanely powerful PvE builds. Alright, so for version 1.1 of this build, and all the other builds, the, uh, the race doesn't really matter. As long as you have points in Charisma, Willpower, Fortitude, or Strength, you'll be fine. So for this build, I went Adret. Your oath is obviously Silent Heart, and your outfit is going to be Ignition Deep Delver, simply because it gives you the most resistances. For your bell, either a Corrupt Payback or a Sacred Field is best. For your boons and flaws, I recommend doing Scrapper and Steadfast, simply to reduce armor damage. You'll start with the Simple Floor, but when you Shrine of Order, you want to try to get the Glutton Floor. Alright, so for the stats, you'll want to go to 220 Willpower first. You cannot invest points on the starting screen if you need to. And then we jump to 50 Fortitude, then to 50 Willpower, then we jump all the way to 60 Charisma. A tip to make trading this faster is to use the Scholar Armor Set. It's a pretty common armor set to drop in the depths. Then we go all the way to 80 Willpower, 100 Fortitude, and then finally 100 Willpower. From here you put 1 point into Strength and 1 point into Heavy Weapon. Now to make sure you get the most Heavy Weapon at the end of the build, I recommend using Shrine of Chance or Shrine of Blasphemy if you really need it to try to get brick wall. Ideally use Shrine of Chance though just because we're shrining at power 16. This will just give you more stat points at the end. So we'll Shrine of Order and everything should be 37. Now you simply go to 40 Strength, 5 Agility, and then we're going to dump the rest into Heavy Weapon. And these should be the final stats that you end add on. For your traits, obviously just 6 Vitality and 6 Proficiency, most health and most damage. For your talents, I've already put them all in the build. Let me just go through and explain them. Time to go is a speed boost, Wyvern's Claw is extra damage when you're in the air, which happens a lot, the Carnivore Tree just gives you a ton of stuff back when you kill monsters, so it prevents you from dying, we already get reinforced armor, so you might as well have reduced pen, stuff like Giant Slayer is always proccing, Rending Impact is pretty useful for humanoids, Defiance, that'll just mean that you take less damage from status effects, Underdog, free damage, and now the Charm Caster Tree. Now this synergizes incredibly well with the build, letting it become virtually unkillable and crazy crazy powerful at low HP. So Chaotic Charm charms enemies if you get attacked while at low health, which happens very often. So what this will do is it will charm enemies. Now charming enemies will reduce their damage to you and allow you to do more damage towards them through Tough Love and Chaotic Charm. This is incredibly useful. And then on top of that, you're going to stack to the finish and last resort to get absolutely insane damage at low health. This is how I'm able to clutch a lot of hell modes. Heavy Hitter lets you posture break easier. Charge Return, that's nice if you have a fire downside corrupt bell, or get lit on fire by a corrupt, by a fire attuned monster. These three are just more health, you want to make sure that you don't forget Heretic Sutra before you Shrine of Order. Now while Insanity isn't really a thing in the depths, because in Hell Mode or the Deluvian you regain it so fast on monster kill, it's nice to have for overworld bosses. Brick Wall and not a stretch, very self explanatory, high investment but good cards. I've already talked about Last Resort, Lose Your Mind and Piercing Will pair well with Heretic, an uproar allows you to fight squibbers a lot easier. Then old habits die hard, simply just gives you more health, along with breathing exercises. You want to try to get loot skipper, and if you want to vow of thorns, since this build can clear the vow of thorns trial incredibly easily.
Miscellaneous, and it'll give you a higher chance of dropping Squibbo coats from Squibbos. Then from Miscellaneous, we get Armor Conserver, Berserker, a big card because it gives you damage resistance when you kill a monster, Full Reset, Ready or Not since you're going in and out of combat, Replenishing Knockout, and Return to Dark Ages to give you even more health. Then we get Auto Scream, you want to be spamming this as much as possible since it has a huge AoE and gives you a lot more damage, as well as posture damage to monsters. The Natural Armor Tree is just a little bit more defense. Turtle Shell is incredibly important for dealing with stuff like Alpha Shockers, since it'll reduce their teleport attack by a lot. Then we get Snake Oil, if you want more money take this talent, if you don't you can leave it behind. Blood Iron Spirit is health, Unfazed is needed for Heretics. Now Manipulator is another pairing with Chaotic Charm, since when you get to low health you'll charm everything and if you need to use your critical to kill a Squibbo or Enforcer then it's going to deal 20% more damage, basically meaning you're guaranteed to health pack. Now the Valve Mastery stuff is totally optional, but there is a better version of this build that can get the higher investment charisma stuff. Although if you are running with a team, do consider Valve Mastery, if no one else has it. Then we've simply got Scuba Drowner for health, Warrior's Swing for damage reduction when charging a crit, and Matador, which is useful against Enforcers. And that summarizes all the talents we need. Obviously I didn't talk about the quest and oath talents. Coming over to your mantras, I mean it's a Silent Heart. Now for your weapon, I would highly recommend a 3 star damage either in Forces Axe or an Evan Spear Hand Axe. Evan Spear is better since you aren't really proccing Speed Demon and has a lower cooldown crit, although in Forces Axe it's easier to use. Now for your enchant, I went Astral on the build, but since you probably won't have Astral, you can use Curse of Bloodthirsty, Vampirism for more healing, or if you're doing something like the Deluvian, you can use Grim. You want to also wear your best DVM kit? I believe I have about 56 at the moment. I could have a little more, but I am wearing HP gear. And then you just want to use these rings for the most damage. And as you can see, we are getting absolutely insane damage with this build. But this damage number isn't actually accurate because Buildmaker doesn't account for the recent PvE scaling changes, as well as the proficiency buffs. So trust me, your damage is well into the 2000s. Now coming over to the summary, we are getting 167 health, which is absolutely ludicrous. You can easily get well over 500 with little to no HP gear. This build is just that crazy. And when you're doing hell modes, you also want to try to eat the the M1 damage buff foods, like Mer Burgers, which you can buy at Etris. This will just give the build insane damage. Now, what about version 1.2? Well, this build differs because it is not a brick wall build. The starting stats are essentially the same, but the thing about this build is it's applicable to more races, since we're going absolutely every core stat on this build. We'll go to 20 willpower, 50 fortitude, 50 willpower, 60 charisma, 80 willpower, and 40 intelligence or overflowing dam. Now you get 1 point to agility, 1 point to strength, and 1 point to heavy weapon. Now you will need to shrine of chance for overflowing dam, although as long as you take or burn extra rares, it's incredibly easy to get. Plus you can use the extra 3 cards on the surface, if you don't know how to get them, look them up, I'll have a video linked in the description most likely, and this will just make getting rares you need very easy. Now we're going to Shrine of Order and everything should come out as 28. We're going to put 35 into Fortitude, 35 into Strength, and then 100 into Heavy Weapon. Now you essentially just have 16 stat points so that can go literally anywhere. Now you can actually get Ghost on this build if you want, although because of how Silent Heart vents work making you invisible, I'd honestly prefer to put it back into Fortitude in order to get 51 Fortitude at the end of the build, simply because that's just a little bit more HP. Now most of the talents are the same as the other build, these are the ones that are different. Obviously you're losing brick wall and reinforced armor, but instead we're gaining kickoff for general mobility, ever changing ages for elemental resistances, overflowing dam for more damage, as well as the whole alley cat tree to give you more healing. Then you can get lullifying clarity for more damage, as well as the whole vigil swordsman tree, since this just makes fighting multiple monsters even easier. Having speed demon on the build does make enforcers act slightly better, since you'll be proccing it, although do keep in mind the one one second cooldown means it's only going to do more damage to one monster per second, and especially in a high wave Deluvian or swarms in hell mode, you're going to be hitting more than one thing per second. Overall, this build, while not taking brick wall, gives you even more damage and healing, so depending on what you like, it can be considered even better. Now for version 1.3, the stats change once again. As always, you're going to start with this initial start, going 20, 50, 50, and then we're going to go all the way to 75 charisma on this 
build, simply because this will give us all the Vow of Mastery talents, which you want to try to get as soon as possible. Then you're going to go to 70 Willpower for Defiance, 40 Intelligence for Overflowing Dam, then you can put 1 point into everything. The good thing about version 1.3 is you don't need to Shrine of Chance for Overflowing Dam, since you'll power up. Anyways, now we're going to Shrine of Order, and then we're going to go back to 30 Strength, 35 Fortitude, and 100 Heavy Weapon, leaving you with 11 points you can put anywhere. Now you can't get Ghost on this build, but you can once again just put it back into Fortitude for more HP. As always, you're gaining this standard talents, but now you're also gaining a few new Charisma ones. Unnecessary Theatrics lets you charm enemies a lot more easily, procking stuff like Manipulator and Tough Love even easier, which is super useful, and you'll also get Command Live, which makes makes you an incredibly useful support teammate, especially in the Diluvian or stuff like Duo's Helmets, so something very useful to pick up. You are giving up Heretic Sutra though, which doesn't really matter since as I discussed before, insanity is kinda just not a thing in Hell Mode or the Diluvian. So basically if you want to be a very support focused player with insanely high damage and defense, then you use version 1.3, with the only downside being it's a little less optimal for overworld bosses. But don't get me wrong, it's still very strong for them. And this summarizes version 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, and 1.3 of my Dragon King PvE builds. These builds are absolutely insane. Now as you saw, I solid hell mode with no issues. And I'll say it again, but if you guys want the actual build maker links for these builds, then make sure to like, subscribe, and join my Discord, since I'll very likely make an even stronger version of these in the future. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If if you did, make sure to check out some more PvE content, and I'll see you all next time.